So the first preseason game for the Broncos is in the books, and I don't know if it's that big of a difference from how this team left off in 2022. But the good news is, it's the preseason, right? That's what the preseason is for. I'm not going to panic after one preseason game. There were definitely some pros that came out of it, but also plenty to work on. But at the end of the day, yes, you lose 18-17. to 17. You give up a last-second touchdown with your third and fourth string fourth string defense on the field. Something tells me that uh, if Pat Sertan's in coverage, that player's not getting wide open. So I'm not too concerned about the end result, but I am more concerned about how some you know individuals played. And that gets us going with the offense, which is the big question mark for Sean Payton and Russell Wilson. And the offense in my eyes is, well, it's still a work in progress, right? It felt like it was one step forward, two steps back sometimes. Russell Wilson played a lot of preseason football. I feel like more preseason football he, than he's played since maybe his like rookie season. But he was out there for series after series. He threw 13 passes, completed a little over half of them, 93 yards, one touchdown. But my takeaway out of this is Russell Wilson is not fixed, but he's also not still just broken endlessly, meaning there is still a lot of time before the regular season gets here. Sean Payton is installing a new offense. Russell Wilson is on to a brand new offensive coordinator for third, fourth straight season. Like, there are going to be some growing pains. And that's why Sean Payton played him in the preseason. And that's probably why Nathaniel Hackett got off to a slow start last year, was they went through those growing pains in the regular season. If we get those growing pains in the preseason, we can make do with that. But we got to see some improvement because the offense, it's not quite there where you want it to be just yet. And you played a bad Cardinals team that might be the worst team in football this year. And it took you four series to finally find the end zone. But it's preseason. I'm not going to make mountains out of little hills. But what's your confidence level in Denver's offense? If you could scale it 1 to 10, how about this? Like, Is your confidence level up or down since watching that preseason game? For me, it's probably the same. I didn't have it very high to begin with, and I'm not going to let one preseason game sway me too much, but I think my fifth takeaway will be very telling as to where I'm at when we go into the final preseason or coming out of the final preseason game before week one of the regular season against the Raiders. The second takeaway I've got is Sean Payton is not messing around. There were lots of instances where I think as a group, we all collectively thought, all right, well, that's probably it for the offense. He was like, uh-uh. Put the clipboard down, Russ. Grab your helmet. You're going back out there. The guy was challenging plays in the preseason. I don't think that's ever happened before. I think that is an NFL record. If it was up to Sean, he would have lobbied the Cardinals to kick the extra point so they could go to overtime. Sean Payton is sending a message to this team of last year, you guys were handed a lot of things before you even played one snap. That's not happening this year. So I guess shout out to Sean Payton for really laying the hammer and installing a new culture because it definitely needs a new culture and it is starting in the preseason. And so this is a good sign of what is to come in the regular season. Now, my third takeaway is the guy that maybe some of us kind of gave up on a little too early after one year. Yeah, he's back. Nick Benito, the 64th overall pick from the 2022 NFL Draft out of Oklahoma. He had a very good game against the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I don't have an absolute injury update for you at the moment, but he did leave the game with a hip injury. Hopefully, by the time you're watching this, no new big serious information has come out regarding it. But I thought he played pretty I thought he played very well. I thought he was maybe the best player on defense. Josie Jewell played well. Alex Singleton played well. Um, there were a lot of good players on defense, but Nick Benito definitely caught my eye. He jumped out to me, and that's great to see because Denver's edge rusher spot is a committee. You don't have a clear 10-plus sack player. You're paying Randy Gregory to be that guy, but we know that Randy Gregory cannot be accounted on to play all 17 games. So if Gregory's going to miss some time and Baron Brownie's going to miss some start of the regular season, you're going to need guys to help out Frank Clark and Gregory and Jonathan Cooper and if you can get a breakout Nick Benito season, yeah, sign me up. Now, I could also sign you guys up for the best free Broncos YouTube content. When you subscribe, we are going to keep you guys in the loop all preseason long. 
So help us reach our next milestone, 15,000 subscribers. If you have not already, consider subscribing down below. Special teams. Yikes. That probably sums it up well, right? Uh, this was a major focal point for Denver going into 2023 because well, 2022 under Dwayne Stukes was awful. In fact, when Jerry Rosberg took over, one of the first moves he did was he fired the special teams coordinator. He didn't do that for the offensive coordinator, and he didn't do that for the defensive coordinator. So Sean Payton knew going into 2023, special teams was going to need a complete overhaul. They brought in new kickers. They brought in new return man. They completely gutted the entire program. And the special teams unit, well, yikes. It was not a good start. You had Brett Maher go 0 for 2. And it's not even that Brett Maher missed two kicks. It's that Luke Wattenberg, the center, the, law, the left guard or whatever, got pancaked and that led to the block. So like so much was wrong with that second P or second field goal that got blocked, which you know would have won them the game looking back at it. But Elliot Fry, fortunately, wasn't all that much better, right? He went one for two. So at least he made a kick, but he also missed a kick as well. So Special teams has a, go, a, a good ways to go. Riley Dixon had some up and down moments punting the football. It's his first year kicking in Denver, punting in Denver. So by and large, there is still a lot that Mike Westhoff and Ben Kotwika have to do with this special teams unit. Fifth and final takeaway out of preseason week one. I think you play the starters again. This might be an unpopular opinion, but if you weren't satisfied with the first two three series from the offense, why stop now? Like, if if Sean Payton believes coming out of this game, the offense still has a long ways to go, which is not the case league-wide. There are lots of teams that either don't play their starters, play, starters on offense or they do for a series, and they're like, I saw what I want to see. We can fast forward to week one of the regular season, and I'd be very confident about that. If Sean Payton had the opportunity to press a button and skip to week one, I don't think he hits that button. I think he thinks this offense still has a long ways to go. So my guess is he's going to trot them back out for another game in the preseason. I think you're going to see the starters play again. Might not be all 22 starters. Might be a couple guys. You might sit some that you feel are like Pat Sertan, for example, that are you know ready to roll and you can just bubble wrap them until week one of the regular season. But I think you're going to see Russell Wilson take the field again in this preseason. So to kind of wrap it up and kind of close the book on the first week of the preseason before getting ready for week two, grade Denver's uh, performance, A, B, C, D, or F. Give me your thoughts in the comment section. For me, I don't know, Sam, I think it's like a C, right? I, I think it's I wasn't average. going any higher than C plus on this one. Like C, C plus even seems nice. C, C's get degrees. Does this game get you a degree? I don't know. Honestly, the fact that the game was so boring probably just bumps my letter grade down a little bit. Like, yeah. I'd probably say, like, B- minus if this it is, wasn't just the worst game to watch. This was kind of like a Nathan For You episode where it's like the Rockies called Nathan For You and were like, hey, how do we get more people watching us? All right, the plan, make the worst Broncos preseason opener ever. And that was uh, accomplished. So People can't take their eyes off it. So Yeah, that. they're like, all right, let's go back to the Rockies. Uh, is Chris Bryant healthy? So that was a... Uh, an eyesore of a preseason game, if we're being honest with you guys. But, hey, give me your letter grade down below in the comment section. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed the content. We will sign off and see everyone later.